Welcome back to Hunter's Entertainment on Twitch.tv. I am your game master, Noxweiler Burf, and we are playing Outbreak Undead, Rag and Bone. You're just in time. The survivors have found themselves about to enter into a very dark, unexplored cabin in the middle of the woods. This cabin has been taken back by nature. What was once a welcoming lodge of some sort has been pulled apart by Mother Nature. It is now a vicious mockery of what once was. The boards and the stones of this place have been toppled and pulled apart. While it does seem to be standing, its integrity is wholly unknown. Each of the survivors now stand on the porch. The heavy groan of the boards underneath their feet. Along the foggy horizon line, a number of your companions continue to scout the area. Kusanagi, Digger, and Lampwick, you are not alone. Close at hand, only about 10 feet away. The silent sentinel, guardian to Lampwick, follows after each of you. A featureless white mask, tight, black hood, leather gear strapped close to their body. In one hand, this individual has a very wicked looking blade. They are scanning the horizon line. What are each of your intentions? I need to sit down. Lampwick, tell him to guard this entrance, this front door. Who cleared this? This is this cabin's been cleared, right? No, no, no. Rowan, Faith, and Omar are in there, and they're making sure that it's not trapped. Although we know it is, they're going to try to secure it for us. We're jumping the gun a little bit as we follow them in. I think sooner than intended. So step carefully, because maybe not everything's been accounted for. Uh, and I unfortunately don't really get to tell this guy where he wants to go. Uh, he sort of does what he knows to if do. The if the house isn't clear, I can sit on the porch. I just need no, to you should not sit on the porch. We should be behind as many walls as possible. If they yeah. have bows and arrows They're and that arrows. sort of stuff. Yeah, okay. no, if know, we can get there. behind enough cover, we only need to worry about places they're going to breach through. And that we can control. Yeah, Rowan? So like... I'm going to call in. I'm going to call in. Rowan, is it safe to come in at least the front door? The front door is only hanging by one old rusted hinge. It is open, sweeping inward into the cabin itself. Before you is darkness. You see the pale outline of a number of pieces of furniture, the reflection of the wooden floor, rotten carpet. There is a heavy smell of mildew and mold. There is no response. Oh shit. Um all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna slowly step in through the front door. Look, I know we need to get in here, but if they're not responding, then they may actually need our help. Hey, I don't want to go into a worse situation than I'm already in. Well, they they've at least checked the front, otherwise we would have seen them here. So at least come inside this part and you should be at least safe from whatever is chasing you out there. Right. I'm I'm going to uh, uh, use your senses if you can't see well, smell. Do you I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try to see if I smell like I don't know like anything that could have made them pass out. If they're not making a response, I'm worried about them being conscious. I'm looking for any sort of uh like trip wires or anything like that. I'm looking for more like like snares and other like things that I would expect from trappers, from hunters. What are you doing, Digger? Well, uh, I'm gonna let them check that. Mm, camera froze. All right, there we go. I'm gonna let them check that front door out. And as soon as I see them walk through it, I'm just gonna go walk in the front door and sit around the corner up with my back against the wall to get off my foot and see what damage I did to it. Nothing good has happened. 
concerning the medical care that you've given your foot. You have aggravated the wound and right. it is seeping heavily. Mm. You're going to need to find a place where you can try to rebandage it. Uh -huh. If you don't do so, Digger, I will be forced to add damage to your, your current damage total. Right, then I'm going to sit down here on the floor and rebandage my leg. Each of you then needs to make a roll for me, and I would ask that Digger make a um, go ahead and make a first aid check and add a single blue die. Well, Lamp yeah. Lampwick, I will have you. Um, I'll have you make a spot listen with a single blue die. Mm -hmm. Kusanagi. Also make a spot listen with a single blue die. Digger, you are operating on a six. Lampwick, you're operating on a five. And I'm sorry, do I see Kusanagi here? Did you also? There we are. You are mm. also operating on a five. So both Lampwick and Kusanagi have failed. Um, Lampwick, you have three degrees of failure. Kusanagi, you have four. Do you wish to work out these failures? Uh, is this cabin a location hazard? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I am going to reduce that by two degrees then. I'm going to spend two confidence that I would get from it being a loca location hazard uh, to try to offset my, my four failures, to bring it down to just two. With two degrees of failure, Kusanagi, I think you're just oblivious to anything that's specifically happening within your general area. Is that fair? It is, yeah. I mean, I may not have spotted something, but I hope that role applies to my general level of situational awareness in this room. Yes, you are not completely oblivious to everything around you. This is not a catastrophic failure. You're not putting yourself in more danger. You're just not aware of anything that is potentially coming up to you. I mean, skin cloak kind of messed me up. I, I'm going to be real. <laughs> Fair enough. Lampwick, is there anything mm -hmm. that you want to do with your three degrees of failure? Oh, um, I am... Oh, I don't want to, I can't quite afford to spend all of my competency points right now. Uh, I will let that ride. Three and degrees trust. of failure. It's not a critical failure, right? It is not a critical failure. You have not put yourself in undue harm's way. However, you are not only oblivious, I'm going to say that you are not paying attention to what is happening inside of the cabin. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that as the three of you step in and begin to situate yourself, you see something through the doorway along the horizon line. All right, outside the cabin. Okay. Outside the cabin. Okay. It takes your full attention away from everything else. And I think that Kusanagi, you're a part of this. Um, although you have a little more situational awareness of what's around you. From the tree line, maybe about a hundred feet away from you, you see a figure. It's a large, ponderous thing, slowly pacing itself out from the tree line. It's another bear. And as it walks out, slowly, you see the pale glint of the metal plates that have been strapped along its side, the front of its head, the bones that are dangling off of it, the leather tabard that hangs from it. However, that is not what catches your eye. There is a small, hunched figure seated on the top of this bear as it meanders out from the tree line. 
Do you see that? You, you're seeing what I'm seeing, right? Yeah, uh, we got a master blaster. Um, uh -huh. All right, oh, so let's. Um, it, this door is like loose, right? Let's let's pull it off the hinges and flip it sideways and barricade it. They're going to try to bust through here. Right. It looks like it's armored from the front. So let's set a barricade. It has to bust through, and when it does that, we'll attack from the flanks. Let's get to work. Uh, I, I I start like pulling on on, Digger, on that door. You're gonna want to shoot it, and I, I take I have two pistols left. Uh, one is like my pistol, and then the second one is one of the other ones I got from the Citadel, and I I want to give that other pistol to. Uh, Digger. You you see Digger really not want to take that gun. Is this something you're not gonna be able to use? No, I know how to use it. I just haven't held one in a long time. I mean, you might need to fight from a seated yeah, position. Yeah, I get it. And I take the gun. Okay. Uh, let's let's move this couch over to the side, and you can just sit on it. And, I mean, you're going to know once the bear is in here. But at least yeah. you'll have a better vantage point. Right, no, I'm, you don't have to worry about me. I know what I'm doing. I'm just in a... Give me a oh. moment here. Give I'm me. not doubting your ability. I'm just, like, you seem, you know, like you're going through something. Digger, you touched the gun. You take the gun yeah. from Kusanagi. When was the last time you've touched a gun? Last Has it been? I... Yeah. <laughs> last time I touched a gun was when I shot that guy with my dad. So 25 years yeah. you've existed in the apocalypse and you've survived. You've learned how to walk amongst the dead. You've taught yourself survival skills and you've done all of this without using firearms. Mm -hmm. And Kusanagi has just kind of forced this gun into your hand. How does that make Digger feel? He is exceedingly uncomfortable with the idea of holding this gun. He takes it and he just, he's not holding it in any way that makes it functional. He's holding it kind of like by the barrel and just takes it with him over to the couch that's that's in the room and sits with it and puts it on the couch next to him, not holding it. Hmm. Hmm. You see your father, Matthew sitting across from you on that drive so long ago. The way that he was disappointed in you. He couldn't hide that look. And you remember that day, the woods, everything that happened. When your world ended, it ended with his death in the middle of nowhere. And by the time you made your way back to what you thought was civilization, it was on fire. The whole city was burning by the time you were able to make your way back. Everything started for you with a single gunshot. And this pistol sits in your hands. I need you to make a composure roll with three black dice of difficulty added oh, to it. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Sorry, Digger. I didn't know. <laughs> How could you? Three success. Despite your hatred of this thing in your hand, your fear of it, Digger, you persevere. <clears throat> you work past it. You gain control of everything that is building up inside of you. And you focus. Awesome. Lampwick, you and Kusanagi at this moment are turning the door. Neither of you notice this. Even Lampwick, with your hyper-attuned perception to individuals around you, you're so transfixed because of your previous failure with this bear. As it 
saunters out from the tree line. There's a threatening gait to its walk. Its head is low, and you can see that it is hunting. Hmm. But the figure on the back is what you keep watching. Hunched, a mound of cloth and fur. You see withered old hands grabbing onto the leather straps around this harness on the back of this creature. As it begins to slowly move closer, it doesn't charge, it doesn't run. Slowly and methodically, it takes one step after another, moving towards you. And the figure on the back pulls on those harness straps. And the bear opens its enormous mouth. How far away are they right now? They're about 50 feet as you and Kusanagi turn the door. Do I have a moment to, if the bear's mouth is open, to aim and shoot it in its mouth? You may certainly try. I would like to. To make a cold shot of that magnitude, despite the size of the bear, you are going to need a critical success here. So go ahead and make your roll with your weapon. Mm -hmm. You do have Citadel weaponry, I believe. So that is I going do. to give you a benefit. Also make a um, speed die roll for me and a depletion roll. Got it. Can I, while that, doing that with my composure roll, can I get to work on fixing my foot with my four successes from before? You have already managed to um, to pull yourself back together, Digger. With four degrees of success, um, you've repaired most of the damage that you uh, took in running back here. Um, mm -hmm. You've been able to tightly strap the bandages back together. You've adjusted the splint, and you've cleaned the wound successfully. And as long as you maintain the cleanliness of the wound, you think that you'll be all right as long as it doesn't take any further um, damage. Cool, cool. All right, then I put my stuff away. I look at the gun. And I pick it up. And I place myself on the couch with my hurt leg still like putting my knee on the on the couch to just let my leg rest on the couch. And I have the gun in my hands with my other leg on the floor and just kind of standing there waiting to see what happens, covering them. You cover the other survivors. Kusanagi, what are you doing? Uh, if I feel like I don't see any trip wires or anything in the, the front half of the living room, I want to move over and push the love seat up against the, the door that's on its side to reinforce it so to at least slow down the bear when it breaks through. And then I want to go up. There are some stairs that go up to an upper level on the right. I want to go about halfway up those stairs and have my gun out trained on the opening, basically, so that once this bear busts through, I can try to shoot it hopefully in a part that's like not as armored. That makes a great deal of sense. I will say that in the time that um, I'm allotting you now, you're able to either move up the stairs or push the couch. Which would you like to do? How far was the, the bear from the cabin when I last saw it? <laughs> 50 feet. Oh, jeez, the bears are fast. Yeah. It is still sauntering. I mean, we've got to slow it down. It can't burst. It's going to blow right through that. That do that door isn't supported by anything. So I've got to at least push the love seat up against it. Mm. So if I if I can't get onto the 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 halfway up the stairs this 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 turn, I'm yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be 
directly in the pathway of the the door, but I will push the love the uh, love seat up from the left. All right. So you take this rot rotten old love seat and you push it, and it nearly falls apart as you're moving it. However, there is a great deal of weight behind it, as it seems as if the mold mildew and other filth has really baked itself into the fabric. Um, so however, it, it's um, it's very damp and um, it's disgusting as you slide it across this ragged wood floor. And as you do, Lampwick, mm -hmm. your gunshot erupts. As you watch Lamp Lampwick fire this pistol, there's the muzzle flash that lights up the darkness of the interior of the cabin. Lampwick, you have two degrees of failure. Uh, yep. Um, I'm not a great shot. It's, you know, it's still not like super close. Um, I'm going to let that ride. Uh, I'm okay with missing the bear. Um, as long as it's not a critical failure, in which case I will <laughs> do something for that. But, uh, as you fire, you hear the ricochet of a metal plate as it hits and bounces away. Got it. <clears throat> All right, well, maybe I should aim for that thing on top of it. What do you need help with, Kusanagi? I see you moving something around. What's going on here? Uh, I mean, I the bear is going to bust in here, but if we have a second or two when it's doing that, like maybe we can shoot it. Maybe from above, I'm going to try to get on these stairs. All right. Uh, um. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, I don't, Rowan? I don't know if can bears smell blood or something. Are they going to go straight for you, Digger? I mean, I'm sure bears can, smell, can blood. smell blood. They are scavengers anyway. And they can smell fear too, I'm sure. Yeah, look, there's, that something, help weird me. About, there's something weird about this. I don't know what they're doing. They, uh, this is weird behavior, and I'm really unsure about that guy on top of the bear. I don't think it's weird behavior. I think that like he's no, I I do. If they were gonna rush us, I why send? Why not just send the bear? Why send the guy on top of the bear when he could easily get shot or killed or? Oh, well, maybe whatever. maybe the bear and the guy are like a unit. Like they are collectively one entity. Oh, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna turn and face like kind of behind us. I wanna uh, uh, see if. I can tell whether we may have been getting surrounded or anything. If this guy's a distraction, then it's working. How are you determining that, Lampwick? I'm going to uh, turn around. I'm going to take a step or two forward. And I'm going to try to scan. Uh, so there's, and the, let me see this map. So there's a stairs, there's a window to the left. Is that open? So if I walk inside and I'm in that living area, kind of where Digger is. I see where you are, yes. There's a window here. I'm mm -hmm. going to start to like scan out that window and see, and maybe out across this one here. I'm not sure if that, if I'm able to see anything there from where I am. Well, as I described, um, the door is really the only un uh unimpeded opening mm -hmm. that you can see the window has been grown over with plants right. now you could try to clear those but I'll, that would take an action okay then I, I i will approach this window and kind of like see if i can look through any little bit uh and 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 i'm still asking you know where's where are the rest of them they're in here and they're not making any sound Rowan, Faith. And I'll use my action to kind of like look out that. Make a spot, make a spot listen check. Oh. And I'm going to give you one black die of difficulty. All right. Uh, for everyone else, the smells here are musty. They're wild. But there's nothing here that would lead you to believe that there's been something that might knock someone unconscious. There's no smell of gasoline. There's no smell of ether or anything like that. Uh, however, there is a heavy darkness further back in the room that you have not explored. 
only the early alcove here, the living area, has been searched by you and your companions. Uh, Gravedigger, you're on the couch. You're watching yeah. from the side. So the door is turned onto its side with this love seat now pressed up against yeah. it. The silent sentinel that was standing guard outside is gone. Can I see the guy on the bear from where I am? You can. I would like to take out my half a binocular and try and take a look at the person on the bear. It's something about that is is making me itch. I don't I don't something about it's weird. You do so. Uh, make a spot listen. You can use your gear. And even though it's dark, there is just enough moonlight in the open area in front of the cabin that you're not so impeded that I will add dice of difficulty okay. to that roll. Four successes. That is a critical. Um, I think it's fair that you're going to be able to just catch this moment in the, in the moonlight as the clouds sort of part. And you're going to be able to clearly see this individual. It's very cold out, and you can see this plume of breath from the hood that is wrapped around the head of this hunched figure. The first thing that you notice are these parchment-like hands that are holding onto this harness on the back of the bear. You see a very pale glint of metal across their chest. And as you work your way up, you see their face. It is the face of a withered old woman. Hey, 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 hey. I knew there was something weird about her. Look, I, um, that, uh, that lady on top of the bear. Don't you think it's weird that they would send an old woman to come and get us? I mean, oh. she might be very respected in their culture. Yeah, but she's wearing a metal breastplate. I Is she think... wearing a helmet? No, not wearing a helmet. But I think maybe Lampwick is right and she is a distraction. Uh, I'm looking out the window and I got three degrees of success. That as I'm overhearing right. that. Mm -hmm. You move aside some of the vines and they're very thick. You manage to carefully break away some of the foliage and you're able to get a clear unobstructed view to the far side of the cabin, beyond the window. And there in the darkness of the room, you're staring out at silhouettes moving along the horizon line to your left. And there it is. Uh, they're coming from this side, and I'm sure they're coming from another side. How many, can I count how many? More than I can... Uh, you had three mm. degrees of success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at least, mm -hmm. at least five. Well, at least five on this side approaching us. So, gets ready for some action, gentlemen. They're coming I'm, from. Um, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking upstairs is better. I'm thinking we get upstairs. They gotta come up those stairs. Or they gotta climb the outside, and either way, that's annoying and difficult. So yeah, we, we need to funnel upstairs. them through a central point. Right. Rowan, we need to find the others. Um, yeah, let's go up the stairs. The stairs might be Apparently. trapped. Yeah, that's the first thing I'm going to look for. All right, I'm going to look with you then. If we're going up the stairs, then I'm going to stay, and I'm going to help see if we can identify anything bad along the way. You know that the cabin has been booby-trapped in some way. Mm -hmm. Faith had mentioned that there were alarms, uh, noisemakers, cans and pots and things that had been tied and tethered here so that anyone who would make their way through might make some noise. 
you're uncertain as to whether or not there are any further booby traps. However, you have this entire first floor to explore. Tell me, are you going to move upstairs from the landing to the second floor? Or are you going to move back towards the dining area in the kitchen? Uh, if, just, <laughs> we might want to go ahead and up, make sure there's no gaping entry points. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are tons of windows on this floor. I, I don't know, like this floor. Let's just let's just go. Yeah, maybe. But your your companions who are here. Yeah. I don't like the fact that they're not here or they're no. not speaking. Uh, I think that they would have. They may have gone upstairs, but I think that they would have come outside to tell us that the first floor was clear. They were, if they were they here, they would have heard us by now. Right. That's very. Yeah, they're dead as far as I'm concerned. No, 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 no. I don't think they're dead. I just think that they just moved on to somewhere else. Let's just make sure. Uh, I, I'm going to start to carefully approach towards the back, like around the dining area. We need to see if any of them have passed out or anything. They're they're rowing. Just you watch your feet. Like the, if trip wires are the, the most basic thing. I mean, if they're attached to a noisemaker, no problem. But who knows? I just don't want to run into like any Indiana Jones shit. If um, you go search the rest of the house, I will walk to the store and let you know if anyone starts to come through. Yeah, um, I, I got to know if people come through. I think we should all go upstairs. Um, I, I, I'm, do I do I have a flashlight on me? I know those are not super common. They're not. It's the batteries that make them uncommon. However, right. you've just left the Citadel and yes. Kusanagi is quite good at manufacturing makeshift batteries. Um, so you do have a flashlight. Mm -hmm. It is very bulky. It is large and it's cumbersome. If you try to do anything alongside hold the flashlight, you will be given degrees of difficulty, or I'm sorry, dice of difficulty on your roll mm -hmm. due to the cumbersome nature of this large heavy battery okay well hey look fellas i'm gonna split the difference like we don't have to cover every inch of this thing but let's at least give it a scan and i'll pull out that flashlight and that battery and i'll p turn it on and i'll start uh, uh illuminating the dining room and if i can get around the corner to another oh, part dope. of the first floor they already know we're here we're not giving anything away that hasn't been already given away yeah no, that's fair um, I'm going to make my way. I'm going to hobble over. What does this X on the map mean right here? Um, yeah, that X should be ignored. I apologize. That, no, no worries. Yeah. So I'm going to move my way over to here, leaning up against the wall, watching out the door while being near the entrance to the stairway. All right. You move towards that wall, and you find a corpse lying on the floor there, Digger. Oh. It is desiccated and its hands and head have been removed ah i'm gonna quickly uh, kneel down it's desiccated is there anything i can see maybe it has anything in its pockets or anything like that it's wearing rotten old traveling clothes Right. This individual has been picked clean. Hmm. I just uh, look at it and I say, hope it was quick. And I stand back up and I keep my eye trained on the door. Uh, I, I shine the light kind of in that direction uh, as I see Digger approaching over there. So I'm illuminating. I start kind of sweeping from the dining area and then kind of like duck down to see if I see anything under the dining room table and then over in the direction towards the kitchen. Mm. And I will call out to Digger to see if he notices anything that my light catches that he might be closer to I'm seeing. Sure I make a spot listen. Yeah. So everyone can make a spot listen here, but there is something that I need to inform you of. Okay. Lampwick, as soon as you turn the light on and you sweep it across the back half of the dining room, mm -hmm. you find a large hole. 
<laughs> okay. You cannot see down into it. Um, there is a rug that looks like it's been pulled halfway down. And you see a couple of already tripped wires that have been broken that are lying on the ground here. There are... Mm-hmm. There's one tripwire, however, that has not been tripped, and it is tethered to a number of pots and pans, cans, and bottles. Um, I'm guessing that's where your friends are. Uh, I need to make sure I'm going to carefully... Well, I, I, I guess my intention at this point would be to carefully walk over there and peer down the hole while stepping over the uh, um, tripwire that I noticed is still intact. I'd need to know if that's where they ended up. All right. So, Lampwick, please do make a spot listen for me. Oh, yeah. And Kusanagi, you have one degree of failure. I'm going to spend two competence to make that one success. All right. Um, Gravedigger, a little more uh, problematic. Yeah. You have four degrees of failure. Here. Which is a critical failure. So I'm going to at least spend one competency point to make that three degrees of failure. A wise decision. With three degrees of failure, you are unaware of the other bodies that are in the kitchen. Um, Kusanagi, however, as the light moves across it, you see additional bodies that are lying on the ruined tile floor of the kitchen with their heads and their hands removed. What? Uh, uh, question, does the, does the flashlight kind of account as a kind of gear or kit in this situation? It does. All right, then I will use that. It is certainly helping you in this dark cabin to be able to search as you move your light across the space. Are you creeping close to the hole in the ground? I am very slowly, just so I can start to peer over it and look down. It wasn't so long ago, Lampwick, that you and Aria Kantos found yourself the victims of a pit trap. You recognize this as a similar sort of impediment. You get closer to the edge and you shine the flashlight down. There are a number of sharp, jagged, wooden spikes. They're dug deep into a dirt floor. There are pools of blood that you can see shining fresh from your light. However, there are no bodies. And it's perhaps 20 feet down. Oh. Mm, No one down there. Okay. The proximity... So now, now the, I have seen that across from me is a wall that's intact. So the cabin itself does have all the walls around. This is the hole in the ground in the dining room area that has fresh blood. I, 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 I tell uh, the guys with me what I see. And I point out the tripwire that's still there. Watch out for this. Looks like so. This is not where our friends went, right? This is the purpose of this cabin. Is it's a trap, right? Uh, So let's go upstairs. I mean, there may be other traps, but let's keep going upstairs. Uh, I'm kind of (laughs) stalling, and I'm gonna shine the light like past the kitchen towards like the bedroom, and. Is there, is the door to the bedroom? Uh, um, I guess if I'm here and if I've approached, maybe I'm down here. And how much light can I get to the this hole, side? The hole is right here. Okay. I'm sorry, I misclicked. The hole is right here. Okay. So would it make sense for me to be here? 
Uh, yes, that would be fine. Um, I'm kind of nodding at Kusanagi, and and but I want to try to get in a good look at a scan over here at the kitchen and and towards these bedrooms to see if I see anything. The doors are open to other rooms. Everything is heavily rotten, and there are plants that have grown through the ceiling and the floor. There is a heavy layer of moss that covers this doorway here. However, it looks as though it's been recently disturbed. It looks like they may have come here. I know, Kusanagi, you want to go upstairs. Upstairs is the safest place to be. Uh... I mean, I'm not going to go upstairs alone, so if you got the curiosity bug, we should all stick together. Just, I need another pair of eyes, please. I can't do this on my own. I got the light, and just, mm -hmm. I start Kusanagi. approaching. Kusanagi, was it? That's your name? Yeah. All right, you go with him. I can't. Walking's not my forte at the moment. That, yeah, that's fair. You better use that gun digger if you need to. Yeah, and I know. I'm moving uh, slowly with my pistol drawn towards Lampwick. Uh, I've seen as he's been flaring the, the light around the various tripwires and holes and stuff that he's exposed so far. It's very close. All right, I'm, I'm going to be focused on this bear, so you better figure out what's going on. And as soon as you figure out when we're going upstairs, you tell me and I'll come up. Okay. Um, yeah, let's make this quick. Right. So I, I'm, I'm going to carefully approach, uh, go kind of walk past the kitchen and see if I can get as far as maybe even peering into the bathroom or, or getting closer to that kind of door that looks like it's been disturbed. Um, and I'm also paying attention to like the trajectory because if I if 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 the path I've taken is safe, then th walking this way, then it's going to be safe walking back. I'm going to move just around the corner so I'm not in a straight line from the door to follow Lampwick. Rowan, you call out to Rowan. I need you to make a spot listen check. Okay. I'm holding my gun and I am focused out the front door now watching that pair. Digger. Make a composure check for me. Will do. Kusanagi. Make a composure check for me as well. I'm going to Are we in a formation since I'm kind of taking point with this light? By announcing that you're going to travel in a formation, you will form a formation. Is that what you're doing here? I would like to, yes, since uh, we've, we've established that Digger is taking a post uh, uh, up over there looking out for the bear, and Kusanagi and I are moving kind of uh, uh, together. Uh, I'd say that I would say that's a formation. Yeah, I mean, I'm about six feet behind Lampwick, but I'm definitely in a formation with him, I believe. I will allow Kusanagi to be in the formation, but I think that Digger isn't moving, so that wouldn't be fair. Copy yeah. that. Whew. Kusanagi, you have one degree of success on your composure, which is enough. You hear the bear outside, and you here creaking on the porch all the way around the cabin as the sound of very, very subtle footfall begins to cause these boards to creak and groan under the weight of unknown assailants. Lampwick, you have one degree of success on your spot, listen, and Digger, you have one degree of failure on your composure. Do you want to let that degree of failure ride? So, 
understanding that this is an ambush. Could I trade you some survival points to not freak out? <laughs> How many survival points do you have, Digger? I have 200. It won't be cheap. Okay. 50 points per. Okay. So 100 points will get you to a success. Well, then I will spend one competency point and give you 50 survival points. Very well. So you bring yourself to a single success, which is enough to remain calm. You will be able to act normally. <laughs> Lampwick, you have one degree of success on your spot. Listen, mm -hmm. you almost missed it. <laughs> As you started to move closer to the door, you look down and you see another tripwire. Uh, I pointed out. And as soon I as told the light, you. as soon as the light illuminates the tripwire, you hear the very subtle pull of a bowstring oh. somewhere in front of you beyond the moss. Uh, I am going to uh, <laughs> duck. And I get. I try to. And I and I and I call to to Kusanagi down. And I'm gonna try to blind the person in front of me. Like I'm gonna take the light and shine it up, uh, uh, kind of like uh, eye level to try to blind them, if I can. That's a lot. It is. I'm going to have you make a dodge roll. If you succeed at the dodge roll, we'll discuss further actions. Uh, Kusanagi, can you also make a dodge roll for me? <laughs> Lampwick, that is a hundred. You rolled one hundred. I have rolled a hundred. You could not roll any worse than that. No. It is God five. Bro. Five degrees of failure. Mm -hmm. um, Kusanagi, you have rolled one degree of failure. Let's start with Kusanagi. Uh, would you like? I to mean, if Lampwick's body stops this arrow, what do I have to dodge? <laughs> <laughs> with five degrees of failure, trust me, I can get very creative. <laughs> Did he somehow dodge with such force that it can throw the arrow into me? <laughs> With five degrees of failure, the arrow may pass through him. Right. Ah, okay. That makes more sense. I hate you, but that makes more sense. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, if I can, I'm going to use competency points to, to mitigate that. How many competency points are you going to spend, Lampwick? I have six, and I would like for this to not be a failure. So I'm willing to use all six. Six competency points on a single catastrophic roll is a is a very strong flex. Or can I can I can I do an in between survival points and competency points? Um, a mix. With five degrees of failure on a one hundred, right? I feel that I can only allow you to spend three, meaning that you are going to fail this roll. Yeah, but it will not be catastrophic. Yeah, it's just about how bad. Yes, I appreciate that, and I and I, I, I agree. As much as I hate to say that, the situation is just not in your favor, Lampwick. Mm -hmm. So, you're going to still have three competency points left. Right. You will lessen the roll to, uh, I'm sorry, the failure to two degrees of failure. And are you currently wearing the Citadel armor? I am. Not quite in time, Lampwick. Mm -hmm. Throw yourself back and then down to the ground. And the arrow strikes against your cheek Oof. and passes very quickly beyond you. You feel the blade of the, the, um, the tip and then the shaft work its way all the way down the side of your face as you drop to the ground and blood begins to gush out of the side of your face. Oh, uh, get, get, get up. I start to scramble 
up back the way that we came um because i know if we didn't trip on anything that it must be safe and i start to move uh up to the stairs you take a three a four and a four to your damage track Ooh, that will that that does cause an injury all right so you have a uh, a very bad wound a slashing wound across the side of your face it's a flesh wound mm -hmm. and it is going to need to be uh sutured and i mean you have a gaping hole on the side of your your jaw currently got it and the blood is is welling up and you know that you're going to have to do something quickly to um to make this so that you don't bleed out got it <clears throat> um all right so you you drop to the ground uh kusanagi screams or i'm sorry not kusanagi lampwick screams kusanagi yeah. you see this and even though you only have the one degree of failure um you're going to be um uh, you're going to miss the arrow However, your dodge is going to put you in an, uh, a bad situation unless you wish to spend competency as you will move closer to your opponent. Um, I have one competence point left. Mm -hmm. Can I use that to slap up against the wall and try to move towards, uh, towards where I saw the origin of the arrow come from? And I have my pistol trained and I'm just going to start emptying the clip into into where I saw that arrow come from. Um, I will allow it. If you spend a competency, it does create a neutral situation, which is really neither positive nor negative. Um, but since the arrow is no longer in play, it's gonna prevent you from going forward towards your opponent. So you drop to the ground, you have your pistol drawn, and you begin firing. All right. Each of you has uh, intentions that I'm gonna need to collect from you. Digger, you hear all of this to one side. You're still watching the door. I'm watching the, the woman and the bear. Yeah, so the woman and the bear have continued to lumber forward, and they're about 20 feet away from the porch. But they've stopped. Right, and then I hear this happen behind me, right? You do. Okay. I'm going to... Um... What is, this? what is this? What is she? Um, I just, I, I hear this happen behind me and I take it. And is she looking at me? Can I tell if she's looking at me? Yes. It seems as if she's looking into the darkness. You don't know if she sees you specifically, but she seems to be looking into the doorway of the cabin. Well, I hear that, which means they're already Hostile actions have already happened. They're intending to try and kill us. That I'm gonna take one. I'm gonna take one shot at her, not the bear, at her, and then I'm gonna try and just head up the stairs. You steal I'll take your the nerves. shot first. I realize that's probably just the only action I can take at the moment. Yeah, you steal your nerves, and you actually raise the pistol. And you hear your father in your head. All of those years of being belittled, taught how to hunt, how to shoot, how to aim. You're doing it wrong, Matthew. Stop being a fucking pussy. The gun levels on your opponent outside of the cabin. Roll your firearm. If you have the pistol skill, you can use it now. Ah. Did it go? Nothing happened. Uh, I'll try it again. Interesting. Let me try to roll that for you. See if there's some problem within your roll 20 sheet here. All right, so you raise your pistol. I'll 
I'll roll for you. Weird. So my understanding, Digger, is that you have a 44. Yeah. All of those years ago, you still received training. You, you, your father taught you how to shoot. Mm -hmm. but it's I not imagine. something. Yeah, it's not something that you're completely unused to. No, um, I'm out of practice. You're out of practice, however. And I know she's wearing armor on her torso, so I'm definitely as less likely as I am to hit. I am aiming for where there's no armor. Face. You have three degrees of success. Okay. I would like to spend two competency points to bump that up to five. With five degrees of success, that's a headshot. And the old woman on the top of the bear falls limp. Now, the bear rages. Everybody upstairs! begins charging the door and immediately smashes into the doorway. <laughs> Before any of you can do anything else, this large, massive black bear rams into the door. I put that moldy love seat by it. So what is that account <laughs> for? <laughs> I'm taking that into account. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you would think that there are not statistics for this sort of thing in Outbreak Undead. Oh, I know there are. <laughs> Indeed there are. Uh... This bear has just rolled a critical success on its lift pull. No! Bear breach. Mm. The door explodes inward. The moldy love seat breaks in two. <sighs> As an enormous, raging, armor covered black bear, dragging a dead old woman behind it, bursts into the cabin with all of you. You have a few options here. But it's very important that we use speed dice from this point <laughs> forward. <laughs> <laughs> Digger. Yeah. You are on a sofa. The gun is smoking in front of you. You've barely had time to register what's occurred. Ugh. Kusanagi Lampwick. You've just been attacked, and Kusanagi, we have to resolve your gunshots as this yeah. occurs in the exact same moment. Roll your roll your pistol for me, Kusanagi, as you fire at your opponent on the other side of the, the, the mossy sheet. That is one degree of success, which means that you potentially hit. Do you want to do anything at all? Do you have any competency remaining? I do not. Do you have any survival points remaining? I do. And I think that my my gun, like my actual gun that I've had, is the one that I have, like, souped up as much as I can in my time at the Citadel. Like it has like speed clip release, like all that other sort of stuff. It's probably like a semi-automatic um, pistol. I've done everything to it that I could as far as modifying it to, to make it like, and my intent basically was to just like empty the clip in that direction to try to buy us time. Because I know that this person shot a bow and they're going to have to reload. So if I can hit center mass on them, like I'm not trying to make sure they're dead. I'm just trying to fill that area with bullets. I've got another clip that I can reload very quickly as I move, but I'm just trying to empty it in that direction to cover Lampwick so that we can then get around and get back up the stairs. But I mean, at this point, when I turn around, the, the bear is in the living room, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of less concerned about what happens with the bow person. Like, I've done what I could do in the moment. Um, so, but yeah. 
you're going oh to, if I understand this correctly, you're going to allow the one degree of success on the pistol to, to, to ride. Yeah, I've got bigger problems. We've got bigger problems. Bear-shaped problems. <laughs> All right. You believe that you have hit someone. It's not exactly a scream, but there is a definite grunt that comes from the other side of this plant-covered curtain that is draped in front of the doorway. But as you said, that is not your concern any longer. Behind you, an armor-covered black bear has just burst through the door. It has broken a large portion of the door frame in its entrance and is now standing in the center of the living room, 15 <sighs> feet away from Digger. Mm, uh, question. So uh, when that shot happened, Kusanagi uh, shot that, I was running uh, towards the stairs. Are the, are the stairs closer to me than the bear? Like, am I able to turn the corner here and start moving up the stairs, or is the bear blocking that trajectory? So you can see here the, the indication that this is mm -hmm. actually a part of um, the landing here. To, okay. go, to go up, you have, actually, you're at the base of the stairs. I apologize. This is okay. Where, both of you are there. So all three of you are right at the base of the stairs, and you're able to start heading up. Yeah. Uh, Digger, I'm sorry, I had described you as on the couch, but I had forgotten that you had, in fact, moved over here. Right, yeah. Closer to the stairs. So you are perhaps, um, here, let me move this, um, this indicator over for the bear. But the bear is right here by the door. So Got you it. have probably 20 feet between you and the bear itself. Okay. <sighs> um. Well, if you're asking for intentions, mine is definitely to get up those stairs and away from that pair. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Uh, Digger and Kusanagi, you have the same intention to move up the stairs? Uh, yeah. Is Lampwick running up the stairs ahead of me? Or like in what turn order are, are we potentially I'm going to have stairs? all of you make a, um, a roll. And for Digger, it's going to be a balance check. Uh, Copy. But for the rest of you, I will most likely make it either a jump leap or a, a dodge as you as you choose. Any uh, speed with dice? any speed dice, yeah. Yeah, so everyone is going to roll a single speed die. Uh, as if that is the only thing that you're doing. It's not going to... If you were going to try to fire while you were doing this, I would impose speed dice uh, penalties that would make the speed die considerably higher. Uh, that's a two. That's very good, Digger. So you're going to operate on a speed two. Uh, okay. dis despite the fact that you have four degrees of failure on your balance. Yeah. Alquin, Kusanagi has just rolled five degrees of failure. Oh, no. But a speed die of one. <laughs> uh, real quick. I think I, I, w I wouldn't necessarily have jumped and leaped. It would, probably wouldn't have something where I like took off my pack. Or something, and tried to like sling it up the stairs to see if it would hit any trip wires ahead of us. I think if I've rolled that many degrees of failure, I probably like had trouble getting my pack off or like something, and I'm just like stuck basically. I really like where your head is at. Here's what I think is fair you instead of trying to jump up the stairs quickly, you were gonna throw your pack to try to tr you know trigger any traps that might be ahead of you because you're keenly aware. Well. <laughs> no. What you ended up doing is throwing your entire pack over the banister in front of the bear. Oh. So okay. anything anything that you have other than your gun. And well, I mean, I have pouches and stuff that have some of my more like important mm -hmm. things, but like the things I need to repair the ATV are in the pack. Stuff like that are in the pack for yeah. sure. So your tools and everything that you needed to repair the ATV just landed in the center of the living room in front of this bear. Is that fair? Yes, it's fair. Oh, uh, Knox, is there any way I can 
uh, convince you that this could be an endurance check for me. How would this apply as an endurance check? Um, thinking in terms of, well, you know, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I am open to a suggestion if you can make it make sense to me. The way that I see it is it's me like keeping my head, keep, keeping my, my, myself physically grounded and mentally focused so that I um, don't, you know, so I, so I, I, I kind of, you know, just move uh, uh, fluidly. Um, so I don't know if that might be a, if that could be a version of a composure. Uh, endurance is, I know, something that we would maintain over like an extended period of exertion. So I can see. I that will that's allow not... you. Mm -hmm. I'll allow you to make an endurance check. All right. However, however, this is the caveat. Okay. You can't stop running. You have to commit Lampwick to running all the way up the stairs to the <sighs> second floor without stopping, changing your actions, or in any way altering that charge. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Why the hell not? Sure. Yeah, commit Lampwick. Let's do this. Gonna die first. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, that's I was accidentally going to make a composure check, but that's not at all what this is. Come on, baby! Oh, nice. Four degrees of success. Yes, sir. Very good. You have no problem summoning the strength to be able to charge all the way up the landing to the second floor okay. in almost a single bound. However, as you do, <laughs> you strike against two separate tripwires. <laughs> I had the right idea, but the wrong execution. You did it the, real stylish. The, right. the first tripwire wraps around your ankle and there's a loud clatter of cans and bottles that break around you, causing no harm, but making a great deal of noise. And the black bear whips its head towards you at the stairs. All right. It roars once more. The second tripwire, however, <sighs> okay, that is at the top of the landing, immediately causes the top landing to fall out from underneath you. No. No. Uh, I'll come back to you. That's happening on a two. All right. On a, on a one, Kusanagi, you had thrown your pack. At the same time on a two, with four degrees of failure on balance, Digger, you started to make your way up the stairs. All right. I, this is technically still a, like a critical fail because it's four. That is correct. I will spend my last competency point to make it three. So it's not a critical fail. You begin running. And as Lampwick breaks through the first of the trip wires, glass and cans pull themselves up and a cloud of dust fills the air you misstep and you slip on the stairs. Um, you can make a balance check. And if you success, succeed on your balance check, I will prevent you from becoming prone. Otherwise, okay. you're going to fall. Okay. One success. You manage to throw your shovel down and catch yourself before you drop down the stairs. You currently, Grave Digger, are right here. Copy. Lampwick, you got to here before the floor fell out from underneath you. Kusanagi, you're still standing right about here. You've thrown your pack over here where it has landed in front of an armored black bear that is now about to start rampaging through the bottom level of this cabin. Do you still have the gun in your hand, Digger? Yes, I do. I have the gun in one hand and my shovel in the other. All right. The bear, at this point, charges forward. Yes. You must bear with it. 
Digger and Kusanagi, it breaks through the banister and is coming towards both of you. Lampwick, you have fallen into another pit trap. <sighs> and all you, see, all you see <clears throat> your dar is darkness as you drop downward. Kusanagi and Digger, I need you to make dodge checks. Okay. And I need you to very carefully describe to me how you're leaping out of the way of this raging bear. I have my speed die in there, actually, but ignore that, please. <laughs> Kusanagi, you have um, one degree of success. Describe to me how you're dodging. I I see that the the banister has been basically almost ripped free, but I see that there's one sort of uh, pillar of it or whatever that is still uh, connected. Um, and so the banister is like across the bear and the bear is like swiping through it and clawing at us. And we're on these, these stairs and I just brace my back against the wall and I kick out with, my, with a boot to try to press it near the fulcrum of that one place. The banister is still connected so that the banister at least like the pushes against the bear and buys Digger and I some time. I like that you're going to rather than try to evade you're going to try to use some of the banister to give you some sort of barricade against the bear for now i mean hopefully you know its claws are, are have to go through this this barricade and if i can both push it away using physics mm. and also hope that its claws are going to go through it and get stuck you I mean, I we can't we can't success. fight a bear, so it's just like I'm just trying to kind of slow it down as much as possible for the next round for when we can try to do something. You have one degree of success. If you had more than one degree of success, I would think that this plan would be very easy for you to at least temporarily. Well, I mean, execute. I do have survival points. Could I spend some of those just to know about the structural integrity of the the banister and like just architecture and in these cabins or any of that sort of stuff just to you would need two more successes so that would be 100 survival points i'll spend it all right with that you delay the bear's approach but kusanagi let me be very clear here you're using a fulcrum to wedge an 800 pound animal back even temporarily, the banister is not going to last. This oh, is, I know. This is mere moments. You yeah, but I'm just trying to get any edge I can in the, in the moment. And more unfortunate, you have not removed yourself from the situation. So you are still very much present here. I honestly don't have anywhere else to go. So, <laughs> and, dig, and Digger can't move quickly either. So I'm hoping we both got guns when it's our turn again. Hopefully this ba this banister will tie it up for just the fragments of a second we need to try to drop it. Digger, however, you have three degrees of failure on your dodge. Yeah, I do. Now, my question is, considering this is a new location for me, is this an additional location hazard for me? I announced the cabin as a location hazard for both Kusanagi and Lampwick. Yes. I did not do so for you. Yes. It is a location hazard. Okay. So that means I have two more competency points. <laughs> no, I have three, I have three, three failures. Okay. So, um, I will, I'll still fail regardless. I can't change that. How many survival points do you have remaining? I still have 150 survival points. For 100 survival points, you can bring it to one degree of success if you spend those competency points that you just earned. And the 100 survival points. That is correct. You know what? 
I don't want to die. I'm going to do it. They're called survival points. Spend them if you got them. I'm That's what they're for. All of it to get one degree of success. You've spent everything other than 50 survival points. Yep. And you now barely throw yourself <laughs> up against the wall next to Kusanagi as you hit the ground. Barely. Okay. There is a slash of claws that rips across your heavy jacket and shreds it. As you slide down the wall, you feel the hot, stinking breath of this bear as it roars in front of you. That is where we're going to end our session tonight. Oh, God.